Thank you and good afternoon. My guest for this afternoon is Congressman John Shimkus. Congressman, welcome back to the program. How are you today? I'm doing fine. It's great to be back with you. It's part of our monthly chats, which I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying because it gives you an opportunity to talk about what's going on in Washington. And, and let's talk about you were recently in Springfield for the uh, tax tea party. Tell us a little bit about this and what's going on. Well, it's a grassroots movement of people who are concerned about spending and taxation and indebtedness. Um, and they have every right to be very, very concerned. Uh, I think uh, no one really knew what was going to come, come about. I talked to a local media person up there, and he was expecting 10 people. Well, I, I don't know if you can uh, calculate. There's uh, at a minimum 500, maybe 750 people. Uh, outside state capitol where they blocked off the, the main road. So, uh, And it was no politicians, no political party. It was just citizens uh, showing their outrage. It's, I carry the Constitution with me, and I pulled it out there and just to remind people that part of the First Amendment, which, which you know, you all, your industry uh, so greatly values, is the right of people to, to uh, collectively assemble to air grievances. And that's exactly what you saw yesterday. Now, let's let's talk about the spending. How can we get this under control? Stop spending. <laughs> I mean, what, okay. Stop spending. <laughs> okay. But what could be cut? Well, what we've done is we've exponentially increased spending. You know, the stimulus package is is uh, nine um, nine hundred billion, not including the interest payments on the borrowed money. All the spending is borrowed money. So. Had we not done that, then you could say, okay, we had the omnibus bill, which was more than, than if we just did a straight line, and now we have the president's budget, which is three times more in the discretionary spending than, than what we, we proposed in the last Congress. Uh, we, we are at, at, at astronomically higher levels of spending. Now, if the economy was going well and we could project revenues coming in to offset this additional spending, that would be one thing. But I don't think anyone is saying that the economy is going well and we're going to receive more tax dollars. So not only we have historically high spending, we're going to have historically low revenues, which then puts off this um, payment on this borrowed money for future generations. And, and those who have children and grandchildren um, should be upset. Let's talk about the economy. Obviously, it's in a bad shape all around here, abroad. It's in, it's in a bad state. What have you heard, or what do you expect that we could see it possibly a turnaround? Well, I wish we'd stop meddling with the economy. I wish we would allow uh, the, the the market system to find the bottom, and then people could take a breather, and then we could move forward. I think what happens when we uh, keep throwing borrowed money at the problem, that we continue to send signals that the turnaround is right around the corner. And as much uh, as we want people to be optimistic about the future, we're Americans, we're always optimistic about the future, the economic signals have not given us a lot of great hope. So, I mean... There's, we're now involved in a lot of different processes, whether it's the stimulus bill following the money, or the TARP money, or the Fed's intervention, or the uh, automobile bailout. Uh, some of these uh, interventions by us into the market is not going to be successful. Do you think it would be harder, well, I'll put it this way, that it's uh, the, the, econ the economy crisis, it's worldwide, and it's just not us? that it would be harder if it was just us going through this and no one else, but it's, but it's everyone. Well, I, I think what we should do is focus on doing no harm. And, but the Democrat leadership in Congress continues to want to move uh, aggressively in areas that are going to be more costly, whether that's a national health care plan or whether that's a climate change bill that will increase the cost of energy. If the economy is struggling, you don't want to make you don't want to make it more difficult for people to stay in jobs or to grow jobs. Uh, so that's the fights that we have when we go back to Washington. 
Now let's uh, talk about you were in the area. You had your recent office hours um, in, at several locations in the district. Uh, what have you heard? What have you learned uh, from this morning's office hours? Yeah, the office hours today, um, 8.30 to 10 at Litchfield, and then I did uh, office hours in Chatham on Tuesday. Uh, they always bring in a diverse group of people uh, on issues. The, the, the Chatham, I had, I had two different groups come in, very angry about spending and indebtedness and taxation. And in my discussions with them, they kind of encouraged me to go up to Springfield the next day because they were there. They were going to do the tea party in Springfield. One was going to do Springfield and then drive down to participate in St. Louis. So there is a, uh, there is a frustration out there. Um, you always get uh, folks who may have, uh, I mean, we, we had the meetings today in Litchfield where uh, I had another angry um, taxpayer, but you also would have some uh, a lady with a Medicaid issue that wanted our intervention to see if, if, if we could help, had discussions on uh, the possible VA clinic in Hillsboro. Three different folks came in to talk about that. Um, so it's, you know, it's always a diverse group of people who uh, want to have access to their member of Congress, and uh, we give them that opportunity. You talk about you mentioned about the VA situation with Hillsborough Area Hospital down the road from where we at. Is that something that you're in support of, and would you like to see that maybe established here? Well, I have been a big uh, a VA clinic uh, supporter for a long time. Uh, the first VA clinic established in Mount Vernon, Illinois, uh, my congressional district, uh, before they even had any. Uh, we, we established the first in the nation, and since that time, we've we've developed. Uh, uh, you know, one in Effingham, one in Springfield. They've uh, proven to be very, very successful and well received. Um, I've committed to work with Congressman Phil Hare, and if we want to do a joint letter talking about the benefits of, of the Hillsborough facility, I've also committed to go visit uh, the facility they have there based upon the discussion with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the veterans and uh, county uh, administrator and also the hospital, seems like a pretty good setup that uh, if it's everything they profess it to be, could be a, a nice opportunity for the, uh, for the VA system should they take, you know, take advantage of it. Now, I don't know their parameters, but, you know, we have Marion. We have the, the hospital in Marion and uh, the, the Veterans Administration Clinic in Mount Vernon is probably about the same distance as here or Hillsboro to... Springfield. So it may be right at that mileage area where it, it could be justified. I'll have to see what the VA says. All right. Outstanding. And, and, and you're right. Hillsborough Area Hospital, if, if you have a chance to tour the facility, it is going undergoing a lot of great change. And it's a, it's a good asset for, for Hillsborough.